evening, I would like on this occasion to remember Joe Cox. I know we had a minute's silence last Thursday, but it would have been her birthday tomorrow. So, remembering how sad her friends and family will be, and I'd like everybody to join together in a minute's silence in remembrance of her life and work for a better world. The Labour Party MP Joe Cox. Thank you. I hope her compassion, humanity and thoughts for others will continue and will make the world a better place. Welcome to all members of the public and councillors. First, health and safety, as always. We're not expecting a fire drill, but if the alarm does sound, please make your way to the nearest fire exit. The emergency exit to the back of the chambers, letting in nice cool air, uh, across the roof and down the steps, which could be slippy. Or you can exit the way you came into the building, through the police station and out the front door. If you cannot get to an exit, the lift shaft is a safety zone in the event of a fire but you should not use the lift. Please make sure all mobile phones and devices are switched off or on silent. If you wish to record the meeting, as I see if you're in race, please do so from the seats in the front row. Anybody wishing to speak in the public partition part of the meeting should raise their hand and wait for me as the chair to gesture for you to carry on. For absence, uh, Councillors Lambert and Councillor McLean. Okay, thank you. Any Ca Councillor Birch. Okay, thank you. Disclosure of interests to deal with any disclosure by members of any disclosable pecuniary interest. Sorry, the glasses on. And interests other than pecuniary interests, as defined under the Super Town Council Code of Conduct and the Localism Act 2011 in relation to matters on the agenda. Okay, now public participation. Are there any members of the public who wish to speak? Ms. Brett? Thank you. Madam Mayor and Councillors, first of all I want to thank um, the councillors I wrote to about the um, NHS meeting which is on the agenda for tonight. I want to thank you for your responses and I think we will be agreeing that more residents can attend if we have a meeting somewhere other than here in October. And I'm sure you'll vote to use when the item comes up. Right. The second thing I want to raise is that following the situation which arose a couple of weeks ago, can we know now what new procedures have been put in place to ensure members of the public can gain access to any council or committee meeting? And thirdly, I note that social media training for councils has taken place. Can we know, please, who attended and whether they have agreed to take this on board? As I'm still seeing some inappropriate and confrontational comments being made on local Facebook sites. This does not give the public much confidence in their councillors, in my view. Thank you. Do you want to respond to that? Yep. Yeah, um, but the training uh, has been asked for. We're waiting for some prices at the moment from East Sussex County Council to provide that. Um, as far as access to meetings go, we, we had an issue with the door uh, recently, just when you're home. Um, 
but uh, there was a problem with the doorbell, but normally there isn't a problem with access. Um, we were considering looking at alternative venues for holding council maintenance, uh, and that's something we're continuing to look at at the moment. Um, but so far everyone has a downside as well as an upside. Uh, the, the downside of this building is always going to be the fact that we're upstairs from the police station and have to escort people into the meeting. Um, but we would continue to look at that and report that in due course. Any more questions? Mr. White? Beat you to it. Um, yeah, a couple of things. Um, one is a logistical thing. The timing of the um, bins being empty on the sofa is is ridiculous. Uh, you're emptying them in, in the morning after they've been full all night, having the foxes and the cats, having the seagulls, having the wind, having the kids. Everything like all these contributing factors are making it very difficult for the guy to feel safe to get up in the morning. And he spends a lot of extra time doing that. Okay? All we have to do is move to 6 o'clock in the morning, um, being clear of time. To six o'clock in the evening to keep the midday one the same. That way the bins will be empty throughout the night, negating any of the problems that yeah. I have mentioned. Uh, my other is a bit of a, a bit of a difficult one to, 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 to approach. Yeah, um, I understand all councillors are volunteers, haven't been a, a, a volunteer myself. Mm -hmm. I also understand the pressures that are put on us by our uh, campaign teams. And the misinformation that we get leads us to stand. And uh, <laughs> well, maybe we weren't the correct candidate. Now, I'd like to thank Councillor Adams for turning up this evening, being that it is the last meeting it would be before she was actually uh, boy of the Guinness Council. Um, I'll just put it to Councillor Adams, really. If you could gracefully step down, because I feel that it's rather insulting to a lot of councillors that stood, or can candidates that stood, to try and take a seat who would be a lot more proactive, turn up for meetings. And if you're not going to turn up for a meeting, then at least not have the contempt for council that you've shown by not giving any apologies. I, I just find it contemptful. I myself was duped exactly the same as no doubt how you feel. So I'm on the same page with you. I know I am. Okay? But I got on the horse and I started riding it. I knew what needed to be done. I understand things are going to be difficult for you because you don't live in Sydney, you live in Eastbourne. I understand that. But I would ask you, and I know the, I know the expense of, of a, 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 a by-election, for example, but your party's been quite used to paying, you know, you're doing that. It's not something they really are that bothered about. There, there, are, there are candidates that are waiting that are doing more than this entire council put together in voluntary work that they do, that are busting to get onto this council, and gracefully and with respect, I would like you to honourably fall on your sword, just resign, because it's obviously not for you, and, step in, and let someone who <coughs> really wants the position just to come forward. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. White. I'm sure your remarks will be taken note of. Uh, Councillor Campbell? Yeah, I'd like to answer to that, not for Councillor Sylvia Adam, but as a councillor here, um, myself, I think we should give people the chance to do what they want to do. If she wishes to resign, it's up to her. It's not up to somebody coming here and ask for her to resign. I find that actually quite disrespectful. So, with all due respect, Anthony, um, I think that's Debbie's decision, and she will do that if she wishes to do so in her own time, not because somebody comes here and puts pressure on her to do so. If she needs time to adapt or to decide if she wants to do it or not, it's up to her. We do understand what you're saying. Um, I, myself, uh, as a Conservative candidate, as I've already said that in this council many times, uh, and Rob is here as chairman of the seafood branch, we do not agree with practices of putting people up for elections. And <laughs> Councillor Latham here is, we have asked this council to even put something forward to, to ask parties to come up with a donation or something to if any by-elections are caused by candidates that have been wrongly put forward or misled to think they wouldn't have to do anything, which I'm not saying it is the case. If it is the case, it's not, or it's not the case. All I believe is that we have to let 
the candidates decide in their own time what is best for the council. A lot of people do amazing volunteer work in this town and this council is working together really, really well and pulling together as one, independently of parties. And I've been congratulated by many members of the public on the way we are now putting ourselves forward to the town as a team to work and do what's best. So if one councillor for some reason cannot do as much work as others, believe me, others here are pulling together to do it. So there's no uh, seat here that is actually empty because the job's being done. So I would leave up to councillor Sylvia Adam to make her own mind and her decision about what she should do. It's not graceful to come here and demand someone to resign. No, Thank you. Excuse me. Can I just need you? Just very quick, very quick. Um, we've had this debate before. I mean, attendance, to, whilst it's quite important that councillors do attend council meetings, there is more to being a councillor than just attending council meetings. And I think, and, and I think we shouldn't just judge the, the performance of, of any councillor by how many meetings that they, they actually attend during, during the um, during a, a, a period of time. As so, so long as that councillor can support the group and can support us and can, can certainly support our town. And, uh, and I think that's quite important. So I, I, what, what, whilst I do hear what you say, I do think it's, I, I, think, I think in four years time, the, the, the public will judge each and every one of us around this table and let give, give, give and we, we will stand by our record at that time. Can I just say something? Yeah. Of course. <laughs> um, I totally understand what you're saying. Um, I don't disagree with what you're saying, and you know it's very kind of other people here to support me. Um, I have spoken with um, Maria this evening um, about it because I don't feel um, I don't feel I'm doing a very good job. Well, I know I'm not doing a very good job. Um, when I joined the council, um, it was a very last-minute thing, and I had no idea how much time it would involve. Uh, I run my own business by myself. Uh, I look after my mum and dad um, on a Sunday, so my whole time is taken up on a Sunday, and I have one day a week off. I don't get home to half eight, nine o'clock at night. And I, I, I do totally agree with what you're saying. I don't believe I'm the right person here, and I don't feel very good about um, not being able to provide the time and things that, that should be um, that I should be doing for the council. Um, so I do understand where you're coming from. So don't, you know, I don't feel offended by what you've said. Mm. I think you've been very honest. It, it, can, can I just come back just quickly? Sorry, sorry. Just it, one it question. Wasn't, it wasn't meant as a... I don't, and I'm not taking it. I, I, it, I, it, I totally it was, understand it what you're saying. Point of saying. order, please. And it's not point of order. It's not that um, I live in Eastbourne. That's not the issue, because I work in Seaford, so I spend more time in Seaford than I actually do in Eastbourne. So like I said, I have spoken with... Um, the local MP this evening, and um, you know we'll, we'll move forward from there. But you know I, I do understand what you're saying. Thank you. Very much. Thank you, Councillor. It's done. Councillor Chambers. Yeah. Have a good meeting, all of you. Thank you. Sorry, Councillor Chambers wants to say something. Um, I'd just like, like to say, I think um, Councillor Adams is putting herself in a deciding service because all the councillors here are doing different things in their life. It's all equally important and we've all got pressures. I, think. I know some councillors are busy and proactive and everything. And I, you know, I fully support Councillor Adams 110%. And what she does in her personal time and running a business where my cute little dog goes to get washed, I'm saying, cute is everything. I'm saying, so, you know, we're all here for you. And I'm saying the whole council is under saying we have worked extremely well. I know if you mention national things, I think me and Council later may dinner, but we're not mention that. <laughs> but I'm just saying we've, done, we've worked so well together. And I think, you know, we want to keep that um, for the future. And I'm just saying, no, and, you know, I agree with everything we're saying, but I think we all know we're all going to work together and I think we're all putting it seated first, no matter which political party we are. So, thank you, Councillor. Uh, thank you. Uh, <laughs> thank you, Madam Mayor. I'm just to add that I agree with basically what the councillors are saying. 
and appreciate what um, uh, uh, Mr. White said also. Um, we are all volunteers. Uh, the work of the council has increased over recent years. It's become much more demanding. Uh, we did for the first time a statistical analysis on um, the services provided by councillors as a group and individually. And as a group, we returned 86% attendance at meetings, and that is in addition to all the voluntary work that goes on. So I think this council is delivering a fantastic service to the town. And of course, the voluntary services provided by members of the public is gratefully appreciated, and actually adds to that, it doesn't detract from that, it adds to that. And I think the neighbourhood plan coming together will um, uh, be very supportive from the council and the members of the public and further um, uh, lead to an appreciation of what each, each um, does. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you. Any other council want to speak? No. Right on. This done, please. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everybody. Madam Mayor. Um, Sylvia Dunn. That's all you know that. Um, agenda item 7, which is uh, thanks to Paul very thorough as usual. Uh, 1.16. Uh, the, the clarity purpose the 52,000, this is a potential expenditure for the council. If this is connected to previous clerical errors, why has this taken so long to come to light? And along with everything else, and the amount of loss this council and residents have incurred, is there no redress? Can the council look into this as a civil matter? And moving on to uh, item agenda 12, <coughs> the voluntary donation at South Hill Barn. If this is to go ahead, I would like to see the investment go back to the barn and not Seaford in Bloom. Not that I don't agree with Seaford in Bloom. As I feel with Seaford in Bloom, there are other ways to attract investment. And 1.11 of that report says the council does have an unwritten policy of not introducing parking charges. So it would be quite good to know that this may never change or that voluntary donations would be the way forward, as I do understand the maintenance and the upkeep of the areas that we so love. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, mm -hmm. Yes, yeah. if you can, yeah. please. Um, the uh, South Hill one, yes, we'll come to that in a moment. Um, the, the reason the two different ones were put in is that if there was a point where the, there's nothing to spend in South Hill Barn, you don't want to be in a position where you're spending for the sake of spending, because originally it was just South Hill Barn. But on reflection, we included Seaford and Bloom, so that there was always an avenue to legitimately spend the money on a good cause. That was the reason for the change. Um, the uh, 52,000, which at the moment we contest, um, I've asked for some details that weren't included within their estimates. It's, it was known that there was a dispute about the amount of uh, about paying service charges on the building which cover the electric um, and the, the, the water rates primarily. Um, but the, quant the amount of what came as a surprise um, we, it was a lot more than anticipated. Uh, so we need to establish how that amount has been calculated and I haven't got those details yet. Um, so once that's been calculated we'll, we'll move forward. What I haven't, where I've the stage right at the moment is they've sent me a calculation of the floor space. So then you proportion that to the, the bills over a period of time. But when I've got the floor space plans, they didn't quite tell you what works on the floor. <laughs> uh, for want of a better expression. So I'm waiting for clarification on those before we move on to the next stage, which would be to to look at the, the actual bills and how they're being proportioned. So it's, it, it wasn't anything within here. It was just a surprise how much it was. Anybody else want to speak? Ms. Davis. Um, Julie Davis, Chairperson of the um, Seaford Neighbourhood Plan. I've got some questions here. Um, these are questions from the steering group to the full council. Were the councillors made aware that the formative stages of the steering group and focus groups has to follow set procedures and the timescale of the handover for, from interim to steering group made clear? Next question, were councillors made aware that in the interest forms completed by the public at the Baptist Church consultation in April remain within action in rural Sussex and that the steering group was invited based on public form responses to, the, to meet on the 14th of May for the first time to set up the committee and commence putting a work frame 
together of communications, etc. Are the councillors aware that the steering group was set up to public participation? It's not run by STC, and therefore questions on social media asking how the steering group was chosen and when and were not a party to the process and serves no purpose but to instil disquiet amongst readers. The council is aware that the process for delivering of the survey was put in place prior to the steering group being set up. At the first meeting on the 14th of May, the group agreed to the survey. To try and unjustly derail the public's confidence with misinformation and demean the work so far by STC, interim steering and the steering group is not helpful to see for the residents. Were the councillors given a brief to use when asking quest asked questions by the media, such as for radio broadcasts? And if not, why did they not consult, consult the steering group for guidance? The steering group respectively requests that councillors read and understand the neighbourhood plan process and allow the steering and focus groups the space to work on moving forwards instead of being challenged. Councillors refrain from directing inquiry from directing inquiries regarding the plan to themselves personally and advise residents of the email address, which is secretnp at gmail.com, to which all public correspondence should be sent as inquiries and must form part of the submission plan. Councillors not on the steering group could refrain from requesting minutes or drafts prior to their agreement by the steering group committee. Air S advised that the steering group that only agreed the minutes be published, which means the minutes of the meetings will be published after the subsequent meeting. And two date meetings thus far have been provided mainly concerned with the setting up of a robust administrative infrastructure for the group, helped along by the steamer. The time now taken to ensure the neighbourhood plans is set up properly will help it to be delivered correctly. Thank you. <laughs> Not really, I, don't think. I think the answer is um, that there's a once the same group is established, the councillors were the, the only information they receive is what's in the public domain. There's no direct um, the idea was that the two operate separately but so co terminously as well. Um, to make sure that are effective, but also there's clear lines of who's doing what. Um, as we've already had tonight, a lot of the councillors are already highly committed and uh, have a lot of demands on the time. Um, so I expect them to be involved, all of them involved in the neighbourhood plans, not realistic. So it is important that the councillors um, and the state and the neighbourhood plan group uh, operate as two distinct bodies for the validity of the neighbourhood plan as well going forward. Um, if there's any particular issues, obviously I'm happy to speak to Christina about that and we can deal with those. Um, but I think it, it's been a little bit of a learning care for everyone. I think it's about stating claims to territory. Um, maybe there's a little bit of that at the moment. So perhaps going forward that will be a bit more clearer and hopefully uh, everyone can work as we do here at work well as a team going forward and understand our different roles. Yeah. Thank you, James. Any more questions? That was quite a long question. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was actually several questions. I do rather feel that it would be nice to have advance warning of a question like that because it was difficult to take it all in, or it was to me in my old age. <laughs> Davis, could you email a copy to me? Yes. I'll ensure it gets distributed. Yes. Thank you. Is that okay with you? Perhaps Thank you, Madam Mayor. I think actually, I think Julia was really trying to be a statement of fact more than asking questions, realistically. Mm. So I don't think it has a true question. Thank you. Thank you. Any more questions from the public? Right. Next, I am delighted to announce we now have a new young Deputy Mayor. Welcome, Tom. This mm. is. Tom Exley is now Deputy Mayor, and I would like to put his chain on. <laughs> oh, it's all tangled up. <laughs> Hang on, Tom. Turn round, I can get it done up. <laughs> Thank you. Just
Is that your mama? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, sorry, Jimmy, there you go. Yeah. It's okay. Thank you. Congratulations. Right, next agenda item four minutes. To note the following minutes Council meeting, 12th of May, pages three <coughs> to eight. Council ordinary meeting, also on the 12th of May, pages nine to ten and the Planning and Highways meeting on the 19th of May, pages 11 to 12. Are there any comments on the minutes? Do you want me to slip more together? Um, <coughs> yeah. Take them all together? Yeah. Right, can I propose a please? <laughs> Councillor Borman. <laughs> Councillor Brown. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Sorry, all those in favour? I keep forgetting this. <laughs> right. Next. Mayor's report. I hope you've all read it. It took me a lot of sweat and tears writing it. But I have had a wonderful time up until now. Oh, I won't say that. <laughs> the highlight of my visit was to North East Manor to see the GCSE Art and Photographic Exhibition. I actually used to teach at the school, so I know the difficulties the children have. And was it wonderful to see them, so, so such social confidence and nice to people. And just, you felt really welcoming and their work was of an extremely high standard. And uh, the, uh, the Mayor's Garden Trail was brilliant. I actually managed to get to all the gardens. It was a great slog. And it's raised over £2,500 for my charities. Absolutely delighted. May we get more and more. I've met the Lord Lieutenant Sussex. Um, Oh, I went to the Crypt section of the exhibition, that was delightful. support for the year but I kind of decided I didn't want to just raise money all year and then donate at the end of the year and that's it my year's done so I thought I'd do something a bit more exciting and have something permanent in the town so I'm raising money to get to fibrillators in the town centre because I don't understand why they're not there already and um, when I've explained it to a few people they've been like yeah well you know they are in a few places like okay there's one downstairs but you have to be medically trained to use it, and it's not public access, so it's not great. Um, and there's one just at the train station, which is really, really good. But other than that, if anyone knows of any more in Seaford, please let me know, because I don't. Um, but it kind of came about because, a bit of a story, I went to, um, I played in the senior league for netball um, in Eastbourne. And I went over to Hampton Park to just play a match as usual, I go for Thursday night. 
went over with one of my friend's mums, um, and she didn't come back with us, um, because she just dropped down in front of us, and she died. Some of you may know her, Jane Carter. She died in front of us, and um, there was no defibrillator at a sports centre. And as soon as it happened, um, we all turned around because we've, I mean, she had a funeral and all of our parents went because we've all been so close since we were younger. It's just one of those kind of tight groups of people. And um, I remember I turned around and said, this woman got defibrillator because she's not breathing. And they went, no. And I was like, okay then. Um, yeah, and she died before the air ambulance, well, the helicopter got there. And we were right by the hospital. So it was not good enough at all. And then um, I kind of sat down with my dad about it, and he was like, well, why don't you try and do something? So I thought, yeah, it is really, really sad, but there's, if there's something we can do, we should do it. So I'm trying, at first, I thought, I'll just aim to get one in the town, it makes a difference. Um, but then I started getting it going, and I thought, well, we probably need one around Morrison's, because, um, I mean, anyone can suffer from a cardiac arrest. But I know a lot of older people do go, like they, they do like their Saturday and Sunday morning shopping trip. So older people are more likely to suffer from a cardiac arrest. But so are younger people. My dad is in the police. He went to a job where um, a seven-year-old, he did have a heart, condition, a heart condition, but he had a cardiac arrest. Anyone of any age, no one's exempt from it. Um, but I'm meeting the lifeguards after the motor vest to discuss whether I could put one on the outside of their building because then that covers the salts, which is a large ground. The rugby club don't have one. Places like that that should have one. It also helps the beach, maybe if you can run there before the lifeguards get there, if they're not on duty, stuff like that. Um, so, how many days ago was it? I sat down 15 days ago um, with the secretary, and I said, I want to raise three grand by the end of the year, and I want to spend it all on defibrillators. They kind of looked at me like, oh my God, here we go. Um, <laughs> they said, why don't, why don't you just aim to get one? I said, no, I want three. And they were like, okay, well, let's just see how we go. Um, so I went on the, I tapped into Fibulator on Google, went on defibshop.com. <laughs> and, then, and then I went, oh my God, they're a grand, okay. So um, I put up a thing on Facebook saying, does anyone know anything about defibrillators kind of thing? Someone called Tim Fellows. No one seems to know him, but he's been a godsend. He's part of Seacam and St John's, and he said, don't order them online because I can get you them for about £800 through the NHS and avoid VAT. So I was like, awesome, we'll do that then. Um, so I said, ah, now I need to get the money. So um, I spoke to, well, I've, put, I've been flooding Facebook, you've probably seen, but the dance company, um, which is just a dance group of old ladies in Seaford, said, we'll do an afternoon tea and give you the profits. So I was like, okay. Um, £305 there, done. And then I sent out 50 letters to businesses and organisations. So if you're anywhere near Seaford, sorry, like, it would be really helpful if you could open your um, wallets. But um, I got £250 from Barwells, the solicitors. Um, I've got 50, well, basically, <coughs> the English Wine Centre. I quit my job in New Haven and then I wanted to get a new job. So I went to the English Wine Centre and said, have you got any jobs going? And they went, yeah, we'll give you an interview. So I was sitting in the interview, and they went, you're the young mayor, really, did you make it up? I said, no, I didn't make it up, I genuinely am. We start having a conversation. <laughs> we start having a conversation, and then they offered me £50 cash in hand for my project. So I said, okay, cool, I'll take that. And then um, I got £15 from Seaford New Haven Funeral Care, which I think I'm taking their business. <laughs> And then I went to the Rotary because they sent me on a Ryla course, which is like a leadership course with Gabby, the old young mayor. So we had to give them feedback of how we did on the course and stuff. So I was doing that, then someone offered me £100 for it. <laughs> so, that's great too. So I'm getting that on the 1st of July though, because that's when their year starts. Um, and then the dance company are having another lunch um, in August, and I'm getting the profits from that. And then um, Slimming World are doing a lunch, which... <laughs> <laughs> you can see the joke already there. <laughs> and um, these two ladies, who are friends with my grandma, um, 
want to do a charitable lunch as well and give me the profits from it on the 25th of June, which is great, but I'm, I can't go to that and I can't go to Armed Forces Day because I'm at Youth Parliament in London for that. But however, in Youth Parliament, I'm trying to give a talk in October about defibrillators because I thought if I can make such a difference in a town when I'm 15, so many other 15 year olds in Youth Parliament can make a difference in their town. So let's just make it an, an England campaign because it's not difficult, you just need to get people to listen. Um, Halifax are doing a cake sale, which I didn't even know they did that. Um, the WI, the Women's Institute, um, are choosing me as one of their fundraising things in October when they choose it in their year. Um, I've been invited to an inner will meeting. By the way, I did send invites. I haven't just been invited to all these things. But um, yeah, I'm going to the inner will meeting. Um, I, I asked um, Luella Rolf at the Motorfest um, if I could have a stool or a bucket to collect, then she offered me a third of the profits. So that's also happening. Um, on the 1st of July, I've got a non-school uniform day happening at Seaford Head, and we usually get around £1,000 from that. So there's money, that's a defibrillator in itself. Um, the Seaford Youth Forum, McCreed Centre, are doing a barbecue, a yeah, family barbecue, and I contacted Morrison's about a financial donation, and they said, no, but we can give you products. So I'm just going to ask them for loads of barbecue food now, so they can donate to that. And you may be aware of it, the PPFA, the Police Property Fund Act, um, basically it's like, my dad explained it to me, um, it's like lost and found stuff or seized items, they sell and then the money goes to good causes. So I've put in a £500 thing with them, but they don't usually give the whole amount, so I'll probably get around 250 if they say yes. Um, and Tangent, a group, are making a donation in Seaford. And I've been speaking to, well, I've contacted both the golf clubs to see if they are interested in doing a, a tournament where the entry fees go towards the campaign. Um, speaking to primary schools about a non-school uniform day, but that'll probably be next year that they'll actually do it, if they want to do it. But also, when we're doing it at school, I'm trying to raise the profile of it, so getting someone into the school. There's no reason why younger people can't be taught how to give CPR, how to, I mean, I was walking, I came here to drop in um, a check, like yesterday, for um, for the campaign, and I was walking back and someone fell over behind me and he like, cracked all the, like, he'd opened up his hand because something had cracked in his hand, and I was like, oh no, he's having a cardiac arrest and we don't have defibrillators yet, <laughs> but, um, but it was okay, but just, you never know where you're going to be, so be, it's good to be trained and stuff. Um, and I'm talking to the lions and the lionesses about meeting them and then making a donation. But I am trying to meet and just liaise with these groups as well, because if there's anything I can do with them in the future, that's great. Um, Publicity-wise, I'm speaking to Sea Haven FM, so if they can get something on the radio. And Facebook, when I was handed the Facebook, it had a dreary 140 likes. And then I looked at the amount of people that live in Seaford and didn't think that was really good enough. So I've got um, over 200 likes in a couple of days of just sharing it round and we were getting 20 people seeing stuff posts we've now got over 2,000 so it doesn't take a lot and also now you're all here if you'd all like to share it and invite all your friends that would be really appreciated as well um, and the Sussex Express and the Argos are interested in talking to me about everything I'm doing which is good because it's publicity for the cause and um, I'm meeting Maria Caulfield on the 1st of July to, I was going to tell you all about it, but you've already heard it. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll have to find something else to talk to you about. But um, yeah, I'm going to Youth Parliament on Saturday to talk to them about it. And I started up a petition because I think that it should be in the law that if you want to open a sports centre, a school, anywhere like that, if you can spend that amount of money on building it, why can't you shed out another grand? Or, you know, swerve VAT, get it for a bit cheaper and have a defibrillator. <laughs> so... Um, I did it less than a week ago, and it doesn't sound like a lot, but I've got about 70 signs on it. But if we get 70 signs a week for six months, that's a lot of signs. And it needs about 10,000, I think it's, well now I can liaise with my MP, maybe it's less. <laughs> However, it needs 10,000 to be recognised by Parliament, and 100,000 to be debated. Um, yes. And I'm also trying to get pictures, videos of everything I'm doing. And Sylvia, your son is going to help me with editing it at the end of the year. 
because I thought there's is so much for us to do in our year, and Tom will realise there's so much of an impact we can make, but no one runs for it because they think it's not cool. So I thought if we make a film showing how good it is throughout the year, put it all together at the end of the year, and show that, and I mean, we'll talk as well, obviously, but it, because kids like you know react to stuff like that. So I thought that's a good idea, and also to show it at the town forum, I think at the end of the year, just thinking ahead. Um, I'm also looking into doing a young people first aid project, which would involve getting the school involved and having everyone, I think from year nine, because in year nine you don't have any GCSEs or anything like that really, if every year nine student has to go through a qualification in first aid, um, even like a really bottom level, like just a basic one, um, then that's really good because it's just general knowledge and then they come out of school with a life skill because I'm really pro the whole like life education not just get your GCSEs and go you need to have some life experience um, and yeah this I just wanted to say that I know three grand does sound like a lot but in the bank at the moment we've got about 1,220 quid and I started 15 days ago so I think we can get three grand by October, but it would be great if anyone has any ideas for fundraising, anyone that they can liaise with, or any comments, if you would like to make them now, that would be great. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to say, how, I love your reports, Jess. They bring a you know, <laughs> life to this council, and I'm here to support you with whatever you need, as I said to you before. But well done for an amazing achievement. I mean, what you've achieved in 15 days already is any of us really are in completely awe with what you're doing. You have so much energy, so thank you so much for this. And you have big shoes to fill next year. <laughs> 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 Thank you. So give me a ring and we'll talk. Yeah. Councillor Worcester. Yes, um, I, I really had what I was um, about to say said already, but I was just going to thank you for your hard work and for your enthusiasm mm -hmm. on behalf of, I'm sure, of the council. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Councillor Nugent. I can say, again, I, I think I'm speechless because I think that, that was a very moving um, yeah. and tremendous achievement. And it's also set a challenge for us as councillors, certainly for me as a councillor, if you can do that 15 days, then we should do everything to help you as well. And I hope it's a challenge to my colleagues, maybe together we can think of something to do as a group to raise money as well. So, so thank you, isn't enough. I think we need to do something ourselves. So, it's a challenge for us. so I hope my colleagues... <laughs> I hope my colleague will, will take me up on this challenge and let's do something together, let's brainstorm together and let's do something as a group to raise money <coughs> to help make that, make that possible. Thank well done. Congratulations. Yeah. 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 There's nothing at night times. So basically, I know some towns and villages around the country and they have these systems where they make different pieces of people's homes, don't they? And they're on the back of road time. So I don't know if you've, um, if you've ever thought about that, but you might want to live in some areas. I know some other parts of Sussex have got them. Those are extremely nice. I know it's very early days, but I just want to. Yeah, yeah. That's spread up the base territory. You want to look at the post of them first, thing not you? Yeah. yeah. Well, well done, anyway. Thank you. Councillor Chambers, did you? Mm -hmm. oh. Anybody? Thank you, thank you. Very, very excellent. Um, I will help you all I can. Thank you. Now on to the charts report, number seven. Item seven. Thank you. Uh, can't promise I'll make Councillor Honeyman go away at the knees like... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> Um, there's quite a few things on there, I don't want to go through them all in detail, but there's one that, um, uh, which I was going to bring up in public participation, but the question I left before I had a chance to answer, so I didn't. Um, I've had a meeting today about the, uh, the bins, which I mentioned in one to four, on the seafront and the uh, litter collection. Um, as I hinted at with councillors recently, the, um, 
the door is very much open when it comes to doing work with Lewis District Council at the moment. Um, I've seen a notable uh, improvement in, in uh, responsiveness to, to what we ask uh, over the last few weeks. Um, I had a meeting today with two officers from the District Council with regards to the bins and they sent me an email to confirm the outcome from today's meeting. Um, and they've agreed that with effect from this weekend, they will do, on a weekend, they will do two emptyings of the bins in future, throughout the summer. Um, so what will happen is they'll do the normal 5 a.m. collection, and then another shift will come on at 3 p.m. and do a second collection uh, for Saturdays and Sundays throughout the summer period. So that they're going to see how that works, and if that works, then that's fine. If they have to move around a bit, they might. Uh, but that should address the uh, the main issues with um, with the bin issues uh, on the seafront. They've also opened the door to, to, to doing some more stuff for them over the coming months, including recycling, um, which was something we've been asking for for a while to put some recycling bins on the seafront <coughs> as well. Um, that won't happen immediately. That's something we'll include in our development plan for the seafront, which we're doing in, well, it's got to be completed by December. Uh, but we've added that to the wish list for the development plan. Um, so there's a lot of positives going forward on that one. So I was really pleased with today's meeting. And I'm meeting with the, um, the Chief Executive of Lewis District Council again tomorrow um, to go forward on a few other issues as well that we are uh, discussing at present. Um, the, uh, the other thing I just want to draw your attention to, um, oh, well, <laughs> the last one. I don't know how many people got the last one, but uh, I thought it was quite interesting that um, we did get a request from a, or a, a message on messenger from uh, the resident um, about the children picking up the litter in uh, the street on the way to school, and I promptly sent a reply back saying, "Oh, uh, we'd love to do a press release and maybe get the mayor to meet you and everything." And, uh, and they were over the moon and sent us a message back saying, "Yes, definitely, that's great." And then when Georgia sat down to start putting the press release together, she realised that the address was actually safer in Australia. So, um, <laughs> so I had to disappoint them and let them know the mayor wasn't going to be there. <laughs> um, but that was quite an interesting day in the office anyway. So, um, but everything else is moving along fine on the, on the uh, report, but I'm obviously happy to answer any questions on what's in the report. Or any other matters uh, that anybody was just to raise. Councillor Campbell, yeah, I'd just like to say, well, about the bins, we had been in conversations and liaisons and negotiations and all that, but I have some photos of people doing little collections on our beach, if you want, because we did the yeah. five minute beach clean on the, was it last Saturday or two Saturdays ago? I can't remember now, but we do have, um, we had lots of lovely public participation. I remember Sylvia then also involved her family from, with the, London. from London who came. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, that's, you won't be lacking photographs of people collecting the rubbish down the beach, but that's great news on the bins. I'm very, very happy that it makes me breathe and let me sleep at night now, um, knowing that that might be solved. So thank Fingers you ever so much, you. James, for everything that you've been doing on that matter. Councillor Brown? I'm going to admit. Could I ask the town clerk for an update on the housing needs survey, please? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> um, you can. So I'll give you an answer. <laughs> um, for Steam is running that there for Ferrer's Action in Rural Sussex. Um, the, the only information I have at the moment is that as of uh, Friday or Monday, I'm not sure which, when an email came through, uh, there was 940 returns on, on the survey. Uh, which, which makes it statistically sound because um, it is a survey, it's not individuals' views, it's, it's a survey to establish the foundations for the, uh, the naval plan going forward and then you do your consultation on the back of that. So in terms of, uh, I know Councillor Lathan knows a lot more about statistics than I do, but uh, it's statistically sound uh, on the number of surveys we've got, certainly within a tolerance of 5%. So. We're pretty um, comfortable with the numbers, and we believe that we'll get more because it's still another week. So, of in theory, uh, ten and a half thousand, eleven thousand sent out, ten thousand probably. Uh, sorry, um, we've got nearly a thousand back. Yeah, I said you're good at statistics. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's more than you expect. That, so. Yeah, I, I was pleasantly surprised. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think the fact that it's a paid envelope uh, helps. Uh, I think that. People don't have to, you know, they just slot it in the envelope that comes and that's it, it's done. 
So I think that helps a lot. Uh, and that was something that Ayers were very keen we did when we did the survey. It cost more money, but um, it does encourage people to return the surveys. Yeah, it's a good return. Councillor Lower. Thank you. Uh, just a couple of things. Uh, one point one nine. Uh, the Hodges Council have um, can you just remind me, um, the contractors, were they employed by us or by the tenant? They were employed by us. The, it was a tender, um, mm -hmm. and they won the tender. Um, careful what I say, because uh, we do fund the meetings, but perhaps um, cheap is not always the best, is the lesson. Um, but they did come with good recommendations. Um, you know, we had to check them out. And so did our uh, QS um, and unfortunately, there, sorry, and uh, unfortunately, um, there's a lot of issues with the quality of the work, which has delayed the work significantly. Have we got any um, method of compensation or any case for compensation from them, or is it not worth pursuing that? I think, I think what's happened in the end is, is they've actually lost money on the job because what, what the reason, one of the reasons the tender was low is that they underestimated <coughs> the amount of the wall that um, needed removing and replacing, rendering. Uh, they just did a small area and it was very clear they hadn't done enough and, and then the paint wasn't right and get a redo of that. So they, it's, they haven't made any money on this job. Um, and, and, and the cost is, the job's done and the cost is still less than the second lowest price. So the job's done correctly and less than the second lowest price. But we have had a delay in the tenants being able to look for these <coughs> Uh, um, on the uh, 1.24, which is about the criminal acts and the fact that Len is um, bidding for funding, um, is he is he bidding from the joint action group? You know, uh, which is yes, uh, yes he is good yes. because I think there's monies there that are not used and they roll over year after year. And yeah. Perhaps as a council, We've we should be sure to submitted a bid for five thousand uh, to the job. Well, you uh, it's fine then, thank you. I've got the answer, I've already done. Under 1.25, the storm tank in Stone Road, um, some water had said that the storm tank should be introduced to alleviate potential flooding, and then it subsequently emerged that this wouldn't alleviate flooding. Um, was that southern water making that judgment, or did somebody else make it? And did we pay any money to Southern Water uh, at all with respect to that? Uh, we didn't. Um, I, I did have a. a it, it's, it's what's called on a. I suppose you say it's on a back burner. They, what they did is they did an assessment of where the floodings occurred and the problems that have happened. And, and it, it was clear from the analysis that <coughs> this wasn't going to solve the flooding issues of any properties, let alone one or two. Um, but what they've, what they've done is they've, they've agreed to leave it in abeyance for it. It's on their system still, and it'll stay there. If there's an issue, we'll obviously be on the phone straight away and say, you, you know, we've got the details. You said this uh, wouldn't be a problem anymore. If the cause of the floods in those areas were actually issues around the rockage <coughs> and it wasn't that infrastructure wasn't adequate, it was that the system wasn't it was paid. Really a southern water issue. Yes, yeah, yeah. But they asked us for permission, a license, to put it on our land. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. yeah. that was all the ones that were involved in. Councillor um, Just a couple of points. Um, on 1.21, thanks for your, um, <coughs> your report on that. I think we've exchanged emails a couple of times about setting targets mm -hmm. for the staff. And obviously, I'm not sure whether this is the appropriate place for the question, whether this meets it. But since you've mentioned it in your report, uh, obviously, I'm quite mindful that we've got the full staff in complement now at the golf course. I would like to see some targets set in place, some goals set in place. And I wanted to know, are there, any, are, are there any plans to do this? Or when do you think that, that will be done? So that's my first question. Um, 1.25, um, again, um, you, you mentioned um, Stain Road, and my, my, obviously there is a dialogue between yourselves, I presume there is a dialogue between the Town Council and Southern Water. Um, what of interest to me is Brooklyn Road. Brooklyn Road, again, has been, uh, at least I felt, I feel it's been uh, neglect, neglected. Um, um, again, I would like to know, if you've got a dialogue with Southern Water, can this dialogue be extended to solve the problem in Stain Road? that is um, a, a, a paramount problem. Yeah, but the Brooklyn Road, excuse me. Because that, that is a paramount problem to, to residents um, up there. And, and 1.21, oh, so 1.28, can you please keep us informed of progress on that? 
um, over 1.2 it is meeting with the chief executive the Supreme Council. Um, one final point, um, I chair the Impact Seaford, um, and my understanding as chair of Impact Seaford is that the iconic, or the, the, new, the cafe on the souls, won't be paid for by LBC. Um, and it's, 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 a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a Seaford Town Council project. Are you aware of this? Because obviously 1.23 doesn't mention financing. The financing of this project, if it does go ahead, we'll be financed by ourselves, not by LPC. Yeah, um, the, the, uh, the iconic project, the idea of that is that um, private companies will be asked to bid, and they will cover all the costs, and it's the it's then the mechanics of their bid, whether, because at the moment we receive a reasonable income from the current cafe there, so we want to try and at least get that amount of money out of the project on an annual basis. Uh, but it, we'll, we'll put that in the specification that goes out to the companies. Uh, but the idea is that it's privately financed, um, and in return for the ground rent we receive, uh, we should be at least status quo with where we are now, um, but no capital cost to the town council. That's, that's the way the project will be delivered. Um, I'll certainly uh, uh, get in touch with the, the, the lady who I spoke to from Southern Water about Brooklyn Road and find out what's happening with that. Uh, the reason we were involved in the other one, as I say, is because it was on our land, uh, the flood alleviation, but I'll certainly follow that up. Um, and so far as setting targets for the view goes, um, we've got the, the Golf and View Committee next week. Um, we, you'll see that the financial reports that I've just been doing those today, um, that the financial performance of both is, is fairly much on target at the moment. Uh, there's a, there's obviously variances within that, but uh, on the whole it's within target. Um, now that we have got the full complement of staff, there's something which is only, well, actually happens next week, um, we get the, the last chef. Uh, the plan is we will sit down and set some targets, so I, I will be doing that after the meeting with um, with the manager, although he's going to be on annual leave for a week after the meeting, so I'll, he's actually on leave next week. Uh, but I'll catch up with him when he gets back and we'll sit down and do some targets. But I think as well we need targets around Financial performance and marketing targets as well. Yeah. Thank you. Councillor Arjun. Okay. Councillor Hyman, Olivia. Uh, just going back to 1.25 about Steam Road. Um, I had a resident send me some pictures on I think it was Saturday um, of the extensive flooding that had happened down at Steam Road with very deep water. I think his garage got flooded again, so there definitely is still very big issue down there. Um, I can forward you on the email and all the pictures. If you want those, yeah. yeah please, because he's what he's done is he sent that on to East Sussex County Council to let them see the pictures and I got copied as well and then so did Sam as well. Yeah, I just saw the big pictures of the car with you could just see yeah. the depth of the water. Um, Brooklyn Road again on Friday, um, Southern Water were down there. Um, and then now I've heard that there's possibly going to be putting a new pump in in October. Um, so that's what's going on down there. But Southern Water have been down there and they have been informed apparently they were down there as people were down there sweeping. Right. But it is something, go up and have an agency meeting today and um, we had a seat of um, community flood group last week. And that's something we're looking into and everything. We can get surface flood, surface water management plans and everything as well. So that's something the group's looking at as well. But I will definitely send you those Thank you. the email. Thank you. Councillor Campbell, just a quick word. I'd like to thank you. Um, thank Fiona House for her work done um, on the day of the floods. Um, quickly, she, she was very quick to go in and attend a, a call as a volunteer. Um, when some some people, well, I was there too, of course. But <laughs> <laughs> thanks, Vienna. But uh, um, to go to the archway because which was flooded, so uh, she came and picked me up, and we got the sandbags and took to the uh, to the buildings, and we went to Brooklyn Road and also saw the the damage of that was happening there. So it is so important now that this has, you know, it's dealt with as a matter of urgency and, and finished by. We don't want to go through that game. No. Thank you. Any more comments? No. On to the next item eight, the annual government statement. Uh, do you want to say anything about it? Mr. Chair, the, um, you can see the annual return, I was in two sections, this, this uh, report eight and also report nine, so mm -hmm. we have to deal with them separately. Okay. Um, the annual return, uh, this is approved by law, 
and we have to approve this by law before the end of the month. Um, and as you can see, we have the internal controls, which is on page 26 to 27. Um, and then the actual governance statement, which says that what we have done um, to make sure everything's in order, as you'll see there, we've ticked uh, yes to all the boxes um, to say that we have done all of the, the requirements to meet uh, the annual governance um, standards. Um, but if anyone wants to ask any questions, I'm more than happy to do so. Uh, and I would recommend that you adopt, uh, so you uh, approve the, uh, the annual governance statement as set out. Are there any questions from councillors? No. In that case, can I have a proposal that we adopt it? Thank you, Councillor Borman. Second, Councillor Latham. All in favour? <coughs> that passed. Okay, we need to sign up. Right. <laughs> Um, item 1.3F. Um, when we have the election cost of £27,000 at £811, I remember that you said you were going to um, speak to Lewis about that. Um, have you heard anything? Yeah, we, uh, I'm still in negotiation with them, but I think um, it, the fees for doing elections are very expensive. Um, there's some issues that uh, perhaps councillors might want to comment on, uh, which I'll circulate to councillors. Um, but it does seem a little bit um, not following the normal rules. That um, the biggest question we had was over the amount of um, fees the returning officer was paid, um, and, and it amounted to running the elections for the one day, and obviously the work leading up to that with the team of staff. The individual return officer received approximately twenty-five thousand um, pounds, and the answer we get is that yes, but that's okay because it's set in accordance with the Sussex schedule of rates for running elections. Um, but then, when you look into that a little bit further, the schedule of rates is set by the chief executives of the district councils. So it does seem a little bit not following the rules of natural justice, but um, that's something that we may want to look at. I just wonder, in view of that, um, whether it's possible to audit in some way externally the rates as a charge. I have been I have been involved with obviously as a district council I've been involved with the LBC about this and I had a reply which I think James was copying or copied it on board. Um, I must admit, I didn't, the reply the, the, the had a breakdown of the cost, and I think maybe in the first instance, the town clerk would forward the email to other councillors so we can see. When, when, when I saw the breakdown that LPC sent, I felt that it was quite clear that, 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 that the, the cost has been, that there's a lot of work involved. But so I would like in the first instance to have that email circulated to all councillors, and then, all, then, then, we, then we then decide how we want to go forward, um, I think. Yeah, I think more than ever, I think when we look at these figures, we realise how an election can cripple a council if it happens over and over again. So I would like to make a point here that, you know, to, it's easy to come and, and say, Let, please resign, let's have another election. But we have a, a town here and it, that we are trying to, to, to bring together and, and run. And I believe that with election costs, Cost of twenty-seven thousand pounds, eight hundred and eleven in one year. Well, we can't keep repeating this. So, um, 
that's just the point that I would like to make. Councillor Chambers? Um, I think it would be good that uh, STC worked with other councils like New Haven and Lewis regarding the matter of the rates of the returning officer, because um, I'm aware in New Haven they had by election recently in Lewis, and I can imagine the, I'm, I'm presuming the town council is equally uh, Town Council is equally concerned about how much is high source of money. So I think if we could do like a joint statement, possibly, just thinking this needs to be reviewed, I think that would be helpful. Yeah. Do you want to say anything, Jamie? What I'll probably do is I'll talk to them and I'll talk to Sussex Association and local councils as well. Yeah. And we'll liaise through them perhaps and see, uh, see what we can do through them. Yeah. Any other councils want to comment? Okay, uh, what's the, sorry, right, we're asked, we're recommended to consider the accounting statements, to approve the accounting statements for the year ended 31st of March 2016. That's pages, sorry, that's uh, page 34 of the accounting statement itself. Okay, page 34 and to ensure the accounting statements are signed and dated by the Mayor once the approval has been given. Do I have a statement no, please? I suppose that we take them in block. Okay. Do you have a proposal for them? Perhaps a later? Well, could I add that I think we should congratulate Lucy Clark. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, the systems have improved dramatically since she's been involved. And, uh, I think it's really very easy now to understand, but relatively easy, I never easy to understand, relatively easy to understand, and she's doing a fantastic job. But I'd like to approve, uh, to propose that we do approve. Okay, is there a seconder? Seconder. Councillor Worcester. <laughs> All in favour? Okay. Sign here. <laughs> The internal audit report ended 31st of March 2016. Item 10 on your agenda, pages 46 to 81. Mr. Chair, the, um, obviously we're subject to internal audits. Uh, we have visits uh, from our internal auditor several times a year. Um, and he has looked into a number of areas this year. He doesn't look at everything every year. He does look at various areas each year. Um, and Mark's uh, presented a few reports there which are all simulated into one. Um, the key page really is the, the actions that we have taken, which I'm just looking for the page number, um, which is us addressing the items that he raised as uh, items requiring attention. Um, as you see, most things will find that when you get to page 80 and 81, um, the, the uh, you can see that the, the main issues he's raised we are um, either addressed or in the process of addressing. Uh, so everything that's been actually taken on, um, a lot of the actual issues were small items at the view actually, just around security. Um, but everything else is being dealt with and we uh, are in the process of being dealt with. Okay. Any questions, Councillor Brown? I'd like to comment that the audit report is much improved on the ones that we had last year. Um, obviously, the, the new internal audit is making quite an impact on the way that we operate. Councillor Latham. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, under, sorry, my, I don't have the page numbers, but it's on page uh, 5 of 33 on the report itself, summary findings. But the council is insured with Zurich under the standard local authority agreement. The council should be aware there is no specific insurance for street furniture or lighting on the schedule. You may want to revisit its insurance requirement for these in the light of having available reserve for self insuring. Well, at the moment we have no available reserves for self insuring, so shouldn't that read no available reserves designated for self insuring? It's just a bit ambiguous. Mm. I think um, I haven't really addressed that in the report, but in terms of self-insuring uh, the, the street furniture, um, 
the main thing that you would ensure if you're going to ensure anything would be benches. But um, we're in a very fortunate position. We don't need to because we have a wait list of people on the buy benches. We have about 60 people on the list still. So if we did have a bench that unfortunately was destroyed or lost or whatever, still, and then we can replace it at no cost. And the library. Ah, oh, that one's separate. That is that is going to go on our insurance policy when uh, it's right. the that, be, that would be covered in separate one of five. Yes, it would. Yes, that would be different with the, the value of that one. Yes. But the others are just just covered by new new people on the right. sponsor basically. Councillor Worcester. Yes, the point I was really going to make was has already been asked. I, I felt this was a very thorough report and. Um, the last recommendation is that we reappoint um, the internal auditors, and I, I would fully support that. Councillor Nathan. Um, page. I, I don't have the page. It says five of thirty-three. The same page as Councillor Nathan. I'm just quoted from on the titled section D, budget and precepts. And I think one of the lines that one. <coughs> Was in the, it says in taking into account the council needs, it, it, I think it says something like the, we've uh, are projecting that the golf course will break even this year, mm -hmm. and that it, and, it, and there was this, this is very optimistic. Obviously, that's worrying for us because if, if, if we do not break even, then this will significantly significantly affect our council's reserves. So I think for uh, it, it's obviously put a, a added pressure on both the town flag and the council to make sure that the golf course does work. Well, it, goes, it comes back to the plan B, which was to look at how we can dispose of our assets. And I just was wondering if you can just keep us, because obviously we, we didn't actually mention that today at all. If you, if you can keep us up to date as to what's, what, what's the plan, because obviously we, we, we need to move that forward in case this time uh, uh, next year we don't break even. So I'd like to know, do we have a plan B? And what's, what's that plan B? And when, when do you think that, that, that plan B will be able to kick into place? So that we, we can do that. And a, a very minor point uh, on the next page it says it's, it's, it's a recommendation for a monthly controlled account to be signed by somebody else, not the person who is in that country. Has that been put in place, please? Yes, yes, thank you. That's been done. Uh, the, the plan B is um, progressing. The questions about four parcels of land were in the neighborhood plan questionnaire. Uh, I don't know the response on those yet, but if, if they're um, positive, then we can move forward on the sale of those plots of land, which would, in the first instance, be getting planning kind of permission, and then moving towards um, sale. But we've had numerous expressions of interest in buying the plots already because of the survey. It's, it's got a lot of people interested in buying them off it already. So um, that would only be an issue around selling. It would just be the, do we get approval? And then uh, the next step is, is, um, is actually getting permission on the land. Any more questions? Right. We are recommended to note the internal auditor's report, to note the actions taken by the council officer as detailed in Appendix B, and to approve the appointment of Mulberry and Co. as the internal auditor 2016-17. Uh, second, Councillor Worcester's recommendation that we appoint the internal auditor. I'm afraid the other two is noted. Oh, sorry, all those in favour? Uh, item number 11, General Power of Competence, pages 82 to 83. Mr Chair, this is um, as a result of the request at the last council meeting, the council had an issue, um, this report appears. Um, so just to give people uh, information on how the general power of competence works, um, it is something that we, we're striving to, to achieve. Uh, it's not something we need at the moment, but if, for example, and I do refer to it on uh, section 1-9, if the council do decide to set up a local authority training arm, um, we would need the general power of competence to do that. What that would mean is that, for example, we could operate some of our uh, commercial businesses separately from the council, which means that you can actually generate the profit legitimately and use that to subsidise other services by receiving that back from the, uh, the, the company. That it's a lot more strict than that how you do it, but that's the end result. 
Um, so we, we potentially could look at setting up a, an arms length company to manage a lot of our commercial um, enterprises so that we can potentially make more money from them as well. So that's something we, we will look at um, in, in the due course and it's already built in our uh, strategic targets as well to achieve the necessary uh, requirements to become a uh, council that has the general power of competence as well. Thank you. Can I say thank you to the town clerk for building the report? People have asked many times before, but now I thank you very much for the report. I think that's been much useful. I, I, and on a serious note, I do think, yes, I do agree with you, it would be quite useful for us in the future. What I had in mind was us as a council trying to provide a business effectively so we can actually run the business to generate extra income. And I think what, what, when the time is ready, this hopefully would be a framework for us to use. So it's not wasted. Uh, thank you very much. And I definitely def def propose that we note the contents of the report. Okay. Councillor Campbell seconded. All in favour? <coughs> Anybody against? And next. Sorry? <laughs> Voluntary charge at South Hill Barn. Right. Wait for it now. <laughs> I'm sure people have strong feelings one way or the other. But we're recommended to agree to the introduction of a voluntary charge for parking at Circle Barn, to agree, to agree to the introduction of new considerate signage to promote sympathetic activities at Circle Barn, as well as an appropriate receptacle for voluntary donations and to agree to the purpose of funds raised from voluntary parking to be either for safety in bloom, for investment in the South Hill barn area, or to be split, split between the two causes. I think we should take each of those separately. Right, background information. Thank you. Um, we, we have had discussions in the past about um, funding at South Hill barn, and uh, <laughs> It's difficult to, to, to uh, fund everything that we do, and this is an opportunity to, to put in place a, a voluntary scheme. Um, I have experience of these in the past, and um, they do work quite well, and you can receive quite a lot of income from voluntary uh, donations for parking. It is voluntary. Um, the other issue that we've had as a sort of a, almost an elephant in the room for a while is the inheritance of Seaford in Bloom. And we have looked at um, trying to get commercial sponsorship of that from businesses in the town. And unfortunately, that didn't work. Um, the, the businesses just weren't interested at this moment in time in sponsoring that. And it is an ongoing cost uh, to keep Seaford and Bloom going of approximately 13,000 a year. Without finding something like this to do, it's realistically next financial year when we set the precepts, um, you will be faced with the option of either increasing council tax by just over two and a half percent or cancelling Seaford and Bloom or cutting down another service to continue with Seaford and Bloom. We are at the stage now where the reserves have all gone so we can't deal with the reserves again which we had inherited before. So this is an ideal <coughs> opportunity to look at that option as well to try and keep Seaford and Bloom going into the future. Um, obviously I'm happy to answer any questions uh, uh, on, on any of the issues arising. Um, I know I have seen comments about is it the thin end of the wedge and that we move towards um, compulsory charges. I think that the council can address that by adding an appropriate resolution within this recommendation to, to the effect that that isn't the case. Um, I'll leave that to somebody else to, to make that recommendation. Um, but uh, obviously I'm happy to answer any questions the uh, council may have. Well, I've got the first one. Security. Mm. Um, Will it, will it be secure? Will people be able to get the money out? The, the ones I've uh, seen and uh, used in the past, uh, touch wood, I've never known any of them to be broken into. Uh, the, the, the photograph I took of that particular one was, a, I couldn't get the one I really wanted to take a photograph of, but um, that was the one I came across in uh, Somerset. Um, and, and basically you have a, a, a safe which is surrounded by a brick. Um, so it's short of going up there with a the JCB, I would say the answer is no. Um, it would be very difficult to, to break into that. Um, and I do know somebody who can make these as well. So um, there's no guarantee, um, but it's as secure as can be. 
and even if you did get broke into and you lost two hundred pounds because there was two hundred pounds in it, but you've gained several thousand pounds in the meantime, you've gained more than you've lost anyway. So if there is a risk, it's very small, and if there is a loss, it's very small in comparison to how much you can make from this game. Councillor Brown. I'm a bit worried about this um, starting to charge because, to my knowledge, for the last 12 years, we've been fending off um, District Council over introducing car parking charges on the seafront. Um, all right, I feel that if we start to introduce whether they're voluntary or not, park car parking charges up there, Lewis District Council come down, well, see, we've already got a parking scheme which people are paying for. We're going to now introduce car parking on uh, funding on the seafront, mm -hmm. and that worries me greatly, actually. And also, um, we're charging for what is a, a public amenity, and I feel that that should remain free. Um, it's not charging, it's, it's a voluntary scheme. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Right, Councillor Campbell. Well, who is going to empty these receptacles? Staff from here will do that. Staff from here? Yeah. yeah, probably Ben. Right, so um, when I, I think about insurance, he will have to be insured for that. Yeah, we have that. Right. We have that for, um, I don't want to say too much, but. We have staff who can carry considerably more than that right. um, for the parts of our business. Mm. Thank you, Emma. Uh, I would agree with Councillor Brown. Um, I think this cooking is in with the wedge. Um, and I think it's a mistake to, uh, to start to introduce charges, no matter in what form. Um, I'm actually opposed to voluntary charging. I think either you charge or you don't. And uh, I would recommend strongly that we don't, because one of the attractions of Seaford is that people can come here and visit, don't have to worry about charging to park the car and so on. Uh, so I'm opposed to this. Also, with regard to the signage, I think for every new sign we put up in the town, we've got to take two down, because uh, the, the, the signs are hideous. I mean, I've had a lot of comments, particularly on the seafront, uh, about the signs. I know we've had this discussion before, but I'd just like to bring it to front and cortex again. Thank you. You'd be pleased to know that there would be signs coming down that are up there. The, the signs that are there are actually out of date and, and deteriorated. They've been there for a long time, so it's replacing the existing signs with more of today's information. Two for one. I, I can't guarantee it's two for one. I think it's more like one for one. But um, yeah, maybe we can get two on. I'll try to get one. Um, <laughs> I again, I, I, I concur, or at least I partly concur with the views made by Councillor Brown. I, I for one, am against any parking uh, charge, whether voluntary or not. But however, I do also concur with the like that I think we do need to um, try and invest in in um, in, in, uh, in South Baron, in South Hill Baron. So I think it's quite important to that. And, and actually, the sign, the picture that was actually. Um, the, the National Trust picture there, for me, I just, I've got the answer. It's a donation. It says something like that. I can't read properly. I'm getting a bit too old here. It says, I managed to... to uh, sorry. Uh, it says, along the line of... Um, please give some gifts, donate to help us keep this site going. And I, I have no problem or saying, let's have a donation to keep this site going. But it's nothing to do with parking. If you want, if you want to see this site there, make a donation. You've got nothing to do whether you're driving or you, you're walking and you And I would support that. So I'm, I, I would therefore want to make a proposal to say let's have a voluntary donation scheme. Let's have a voluntary donation scheme there. And I, I, I don't know if you the right one. No, nothing to do with parking, nothing to do with, 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 with your mode of transport. It's just about if you want to keep this site going, then please donate to keep it going. So. I am proposing a nutrition a, 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 a to the motion. I, I don't I don't know the actual wording to it, but I'm sure the I'm sure the town clerk is much more um, experienced than myself to get the wording right. But it's along the line of a voluntary donation scheme um, by anybody who wants to see who wants to keep the site going, and it's nothing nothing to do about parking. And I don't know if that would be more acceptable to to, to my colleagues. Give uh, 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 me yeah, thank you, Madam Chair. Um, Council needs to speak in the church pretty much. <laughs> um, yeah, I'd, um, I'd like to um, you said form support with, um, with Council Needy what he says. Um, also, I'd just like to add that perhaps you look at other open spaces and look at a donation thing. Um, and, and particularly, we could use the um, Mayor's Charities 
and the young age charities um, in, in the, and spoke to the salts um, but they put an automaton um, type thing in there something of amusement that, that the donations can come forward with that so that's separately should not um, on the agenda um, and just also for the council to um, ratify um, its policy that we won't charge um, for uh, uh, parking within these areas of the Thank you. Councillor Campbell, yeah, I just wanted to talk about Seaford in Blue. Um, I think Seaford in Blue, uh, would there be alternatives uh, that we could fundraise, crowdfunding, and things like that? Because obviously it's something that we still want to keep going if we want to keep going. Why, why can't we find other alternatives of, of running this as? Such as you know, getting ourselves out there during the coffee mornings and the, the cake sales, and you know, getting the interest. You know, maybe promoting something like a a, a plant sale and getting the, the public involved as well. Uh, doing planters that you know people can can um, ask and, and you know talk to the council and, and do a planter, do a, a contest or. You know, there's so many, so many other ways of, of getting the money for this. I think uh, it's not just set in stone that we have to be uh, on on this project. I think. And that's okay, Council now. Yeah, um, it's Stephen in Bloom. I was going to, to talk about really. I'm, I, I'm, I'm of the opinion that the people that obviously will enjoy Stephen in Bloom. It's wonderful for all of us. But I think some of the, biggest benefactors of that are the businesses and the shops, not just shops either, it's businesses as well throughout the town. And I, I wonder, have we, have we got some sort of view on which businesses contribute a lot to Seaford in Bloom and other things and which don't contribute at all? I don't know if we've got some sort of overview of, of that because I, I feel that perhaps more pressure should be put on some businesses that, that don't contribute to things like Seaford in Bloom. Chair, I think maybe it's on the Seaford and Bloom if I just address that. We did have an officer spend in the region of um, well, certainly several days' work trying to get sponsorship for Seaford and Bloom and he achieved absolutely nothing. Um, not a single business was interested in sponsoring anything. Um, so we, we, we've had to cut our losses and say that that doesn't work, unfortunately. Um, and, and decide to look at plan B, and this is plan B. Um, the, these are their options potentially, but the, the, the beauty of this option is it doesn't cost anything to collect. The, the, the labour intense, the labour involved in this is minimal, it's just collecting the money from the, 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 the uh, receptacle and taking it to the bank. Uh, whereas fundraising is something that you have to do every year and takes up a lot of time, and this is not a one-off cost of £13,000, that's every single year you have to raise £13,000. Um, so it's a lot of money to raise. If you think that on average the mayor raises £2,000 a year for their charity, to suddenly say we can achieve 13000 for Seaford and Bloom would be ambitious um, because I, I don't see that happening. Um, and it would sit, but there was a voluntary group that was set up for a long time and they did do well raising money, but that was all they did, uh, a group of volunteers that raised money for Seaford and Bloom and nothing else. In the absence of that group, um, we haven't got another option apart from increasing and putting on the precept. I don't know where they'd like to I, I honestly don't know the detail, but, but I, I know it was a committed group of people, and yeah. you do have those types of people in different towns, and I've seen it work successfully elsewhere. But I've also seen sponsorship work elsewhere in places like Cowan, for example. They raise over 20,000 a year from local businesses, but for whatever reason, it didn't happen. Could we put the young mayor on to this? Councillor Bourne's next. Thank you, Chair. Um, just to come back on Super and Blue, Chair, um, James, I believe last year I worked particularly hard at uh, trying to get through this, yes. and it just came to a halt. Um, but I was, we, we had a list of the uh, strategy, which I um, was a lot on with. Um, and I'm still waiting for the um, results for that in the fact that we were approaching for other sites to offer to businesses and we still are we still no further with that? Um, we, well we're not, uh, we haven't got, it's, it's on the list but we haven't got the, 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 the resources to do that as a priority at the moment because again coming back to this thing of time resources we put a lot in to try and get sponsorship at one point, didn't achieve anything 
Um, so we're then going back to the idea of sponsoring different beds around town. That in itself is, is probably a full-time job for somebody for three or four months to achieve all that work. And we haven't got the capacity at the moment in the office to do that. That doesn't mean it can't happen, but even then, with all those beds sponsored that we were looking at, it wouldn't give us enough money, potentially, to provide, in addition, what we already have now. Yeah, I, I, from, just going back, um, I had a lot of support from um, businesses and that, that were interested, and that it was on from, from, from the, the sites that we were going to offer, and one of those was the cutting. Yeah, the county seat, not in the, and you know what, I work quite hard on getting, on getting those things. Um, and there is um, businesses in the town that will respond to it, and perhaps um, just need a bit more, uh, and perhaps the council lower guys get involved, or other councillors. Um, I'm sure there are businesses in the town that will respond to these once we've got um, um, confirmation from um, areas that need Sussex um, and that we've never that we would look forward to. The, addition, the, the, the difference with those sites was that there were a sponsor sign on the Highway Verge which is different from sponsoring the flowers around town at the moment where there's no signage. Um, so they would pay for those flower beds around town potentially, but they're new beds, which take time to get developed and also get them. Um, we would have to, yeah, we'd have to work with outside agencies to put those in place. Um, so there's a lot of work involved in those. I'm not saying they won't work, but it's not money to pay for what we've got now. It's money to pay for extra stuff in the future, what we're looking at there. Whereas what we've got now, which is the containers, we couldn't get anyone to sponsor those. But that potentially is sort of taking Seaford and Bloom on to the next well, level. I would like a written update, please, Chair, if that's possible, yeah, sure. of where we are with this, because um, this is the first for six months since we're going to get back on that, actually. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Chair. Councilman Raven? Yes, I just want to say what the hard work the um, original Seaford and Bloom Committee um, did. It was all volunteers. Uh, they regularly um, opened their gardens um, on different days to raise money. Um, they had lunches and, um, and then at the, in the summer season they had um, you know, um, a competition where people could uh, have the best hanging basket uh, with uh, commercial business. Uh, and it was very successful but they did work very, very hard. To, to keep this town living, I suppose. <laughs> um, but do we know what other towns do? I think New Haven is volunteers, and uh, it's people volunteering again and committing themselves. Business is well done. All, all I know is that when they folded, they did try to get people to take over from them and, and weren't successful, unfortunately. And that's why they had to go over to the town council. Okay, Young Mayor's next. Oh, um, I just wanted to say, 13 grand on flowers seems like a lot of money. Does it? Is it? Is it the actual flowers that are costing 13 grand? Uh, Can anyone answer that? Yeah, it's not just the flowers; it's the watering of them, and also there's okay. two. There's two lots of bedding as well as summer and, and winter bedding. So there's two lots of flowers each year. Because I was thinking. In like, if you went to say, I know when I was in primary school, we had a big garden, and it was like the school's garden, and then you have to go and, um, you know, you have to water stuff, and you have to pick weeds, and you've got to do all that stuff. Instead of looking at businesses to shed out money, if you did it as like a project and did it like, there's so many primary schools, and the amount of money they get on stuff like non-school uniform days and stuff like that, if you engage them into a project, say, where they have a school trip and they help plant them or they help do something with them, or if, you know, just a bit of engagement, because I mean going around to businesses and asking money for flowers, I know if I was a business I'd probably be a bit like, that's, a, that's money I can probably avoid, but I don't know, maybe if you just looked at youth engagement in it. It could boost it a bit more. Sort of like a get your yog from Dr. B a bin. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Lots of ideas there, Jess. Thank you. Rashnuma? Yes, sir. Sorry, I'm... Councillor Hard. Hi, uh, yes, sir. Yes, I to say because it's uh, in front of, you know, Spurt Bloom is one of, one of in, in front of our restaurant, and I, I love to go to meet or have any Indian coffee morning or something. If Bonatero is Councillor Bowman 
contact with us. I love to do something it's because of the beauty of in front of our business, the beauty mm -hmm. of our road and library as well. Mm -hmm. And I love to do something. We should do Thank you, something. Emma. Well, just two things. One, why can't the uh, the plants things be reduced so it's not all over the town why not maybe just have it through the main street or something and secondly as a small business owner I would just like to point out I cannot tell you how many letters I receive you know donations for apples donations for this can you do this can you do that and you know a small business like mine is very very limited and I do try and and I do donate a certain amount each year which, but we can't constantly keep paying out money for things that, you know, don't actually always benefit the business in itself. But Thank I, you. you know, just why does it have to be this massive amount of thirteen thousand pounds and not reduce it to a smaller area of flowers? Councillor Hyman, Richard. Thank you, Thank you. Thank you. Um, I mean, you have, you have to. I think everyone would agree. It's, um, it is really pretty tatty up there, Carl Pond. I mean, I don't think that's, that's not the only plan to end up there. I mean, Carl Pond is pretty tatty. It's, the fine spaces don't really exist, really, from what I've seen. Um, I don't know where the boundaries as effectively are. There's a lot of concrete. Um, it's just um, uh, a roughness, effectively. So I, mean, I can see why the whole lot does need to be, need to be done. I mean, going back to see from the Bloom, um, I know. I know they, they do and still do the new home, don't they? Have, have, we, have we ever put a plea in again for the sea going back to Paradise Park? I mean, we know there's a new home base, but can they not support both? Good idea. Councillor Borman. Well, I think yeah, I'm just sort of getting a bit sidetracked here, but I think perhaps we put some agenda for a future meeting um, to discuss that's chair. Um, and then go and um, carry on with the, uh, the evening's events. Yeah, just quickly, though, if I may. Um, it was mentioned before, the member of public um, brought up last year's into court about putting memorial plaques onto the um, Stephen Bloom. Mm -hmm. um, not so sure about having death plaques um, things in, in the same place, the wrong way. Um, however, uh, there could be an area that perhaps people could sponsor um, Stephen Bloom, so that would have the public way for memorial benches, and perhaps the wrong last memory that there's, there's flowers in the town that are remembered by that, and perhaps a, a good um, definition for that somewhere. Thank you, <laughs> Thank you, Chair. Yes, uh, uh, again, I'd like to, I agree with Councillor Bowman. We just want to come back to the motion. Uh, I'd like to amend my amendment again. <laughs> <laughs> and and uh, the, the wording I was going to suggest is this to agree to the introduction of a plea for voluntary donations and uh, whilst reaffirming STC's unwritten policy of not introducing parking charges whether voluntary or compulsory mm -hmm. on any, um, at, at any of his venues. So, that's good. Have you got that? <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm kind of making the offer since I got along, but I think this kind of saying, um, can you follow the introduction to be a fan? I was just really going to say we seem to have got sidetracked. We started on a voluntary charge and we spent more time talking about Seaford in Blue. And I don't really think that was on the agenda. Councillor Campbell's next. Yeah, I just wanted to say about Badge Seaford in Bloom, sorry. Um, it's instead of asking one business at a time, why can't we get a group of businesses to go together and look after a certain bed? Or, you know, that's another idea. If you get one business to look after one bed, it seems like a huge job. But if you get like a group of businesses from a certain, like for example, Clare Parade, there are lots of businesses there. Instead of making one business re responsible for a bed, why not a group of businesses just an a suggestion. Hey, Councillor Yeah, and moving back to the, the motion, um, <coughs> I think if you ask for a donation, which I, I'm not, not averse to, but people want to know what they're donating for. <laughs> that if they think they're just giving Seaford Town Council money, I think we might all be on the losing wicket. What, what is, is the donation for? People will want to know. 
Yes, it needs to say yeah. that very clearly. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think yeah. We, we are going to have yeah. something like that on the, the actual brick built. Um, Councillor Gorman? Uh, thank you, Councillor Lyons, for that uh, leading into it, actually. Um, a resident actually suggested something online, and it says, um, this facility is maintained by Seaford Town Council. If you've enjoyed your visit here, please feel free to voluntarily donate towards it, and then just say for that date. So just simple wording like that. I don't think you have to plead, but um, I think oh. that's the wrong word. But I think something similar to what the uh, residents put forward is quite acceptable, in my view. Could you put that in an email to me, please? Certainly, Jane. Yeah. So, and, and to James. Yeah. So I think um, perhaps it's really important on the boat, but it yeah. goes ahead please. Right, we do have a new proposal now, which I'm going to ask the town park to read out. So to, to agree to the introduction of a plea for voluntary donations by the three them and see for town council's unwritten policy will no longer be unwritten, will it? Policy not to introduce some parking charges at any of its Can you stick a plea from that? So just to remove yeah. Okay. To agree to the introduction of a voluntary uh, donation by three firm and Seaford Town Councils policy of not introducing parking charges at any of its venues. Nothing out of everybody's concerned. Yeah. Yeah. Propose, you would propose Second. Oh, sorry. Councillor Honeyman. If, for example, there was, you wanted to start doing something similar at the Gold Club, could be, then this, this, this motion would cover that. So if, if you wanted to do a bond for something similar, uh, yeah, any, any city town council society would be oh, really good. Good. If there was stuff doing this at this stage. And it's not, it's not a binding it's not a binding motion, is it? Would it have to be overturned if, if, it, if um, you were going to charge charge? All oh, right, if you're going to charge, I see. Um, that would that would certainly have to come on as an agenda. It would. Um, it would be a democratic decision to decide if you're going to change your policy. Yeah, you, you, you can change your policy at any time to council. The good practice is you don't do it within six months. So that's good practice. Sorry, Chair, just come back. Councillor Bowman? Yeah, um, just early on, um, perhaps my colleague's response there is um, that we're back to find that it um, is not um, going to be compulsory charge. Um, and I think that is being um, put across as well. Thank you. Councillor Bowman? 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 Councillor Bowman?
Chair, this has just come about because we were approached, as were all councils in the country, to see if we'd be interested in nominating the centenary field. Um, as soon as it's on the agenda, it's a matter for the council to decide if you'd like to. And if so, uh, if you agree to the potential site being the war memorial. It's a matter for yourselves, Chair. Okay, so any questions, any comments, Councillor mm -hmm. I, I would like to propose to agree to the war memorial. Councillor Brown? Yes, I'd just like to sort of point out that this will also help with the neighbourhood plan because that will then become a protected site. All in favour? Right. right, item number 14, and this is what Miss Brett referred to earlier. NHS East Sussex Healthcare Public Engagement consider a response in reply to a letter received from the NHS and personally I think this is a great idea I think we should support it any questions Councillor Tanuji Councillor Lee uh, Mrs Brett has been exchanging emails with some councillors myself and um, mm -hmm. one of them and I, I <coughs> And there are two points. One is, um, I felt that um, th 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 this is a welcome opportunity to talk, to engage with the NHS. But unfortunately, the NHS is in one body. The NHS is made up of many different body organisations. Um, two very important ones are the, C the, C the CCG, the Clinical Commissioning Group. Um, and this is an, an offer from ESH, which is the provider. So I, I would like us to maybe use this as, 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 an, as an opportunity to actually invite the CCG as well, because the CCG actually controls the budget. So maybe, I'm not sure how we, how we want to play this as a council, whether to have, to have both of them into a meeting together, because obviously otherwise you have a situation where one blames the other. So I, I think if we want to make the most of this, let's have the CCG and let's have ESH come and talk to us together. So that, that, that's probably my, my first comment. I'm not sure how we can make, if we can make that possible or how. Uh, I know the CCG has, are quite keen. To, um, um, I've been, I've come to, 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 to speak. I've organised meeting before. The CCG have attended. I've attended. I know they, they wouldn't say no. So that's that's my that's my first point. And I think the point that Mrs. Brett made, which again I agree with, is such a meeting is, is of very very of vital importance to people of the town. I think it would be nice to, to make the, the, the meeting the, the, provide the, the, the most widest opportunity um, um, for, for people to attend this meeting. So maybe that that, that meeting should be held uh, at a venue other than this venue. Mm -hmm. So venue that people, people, uh, large enough for people to attend and, and free for people, people to come to. I think, uh, I'm sure that there are many venues which we, we can choose from, but I think it'd be nice to, so there, so there are two suggestions I'm making. I don't know if, I, if, if that requires a motion. One is to, re, to invite the CCG, <coughs> um, so we have a joint meeting of the NHS, not just one part of the NHS, and to, to make that meeting a public meeting, or at least a, 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 in a public venue, so that, so that the public can actually attend. Thank you, Thank you, I think this is a great idea. It gives us another string to the bow. I don't think we're getting very far with the CCG with all due respect to Councillor Nugent's efforts. And uh, I think this gives us a terrific opportunity to talk about infrastructure issues and so on uh, in the town as far as healthcare is concerned. So I'd certainly like to second any proposal in that, in that regard. Okay, Councillor Borman. Uh, just a little bit of an opportunity for the young mayor um, and chair. Um, perhaps we have um, approached the fair school and have um, some funds raised for the student labels as it's part of the health of the funds with the NHS. Thank you. Mr. Brown? I'd just like to point out, Madam Mayor, that they say one of your meetings, so it's probably a one off. Are there any more questions? What is the proposal, James? Are we including Councillor Adonijia's suggestion? That's what you What do the council think? Should we adopt Councillor Adonijia's suggestion of inviting yeah. another branch of the... Could I suggest you look at an additional meeting date in that case? Um, probably in... Because our, our next council meeting is in October. 
Um, I'm not sure if we've got a free Thursday in September, uh, but we could look at either September or late August um, as an alternative date, but we perhaps offer that to these to work together to get together and have an extraordinary meeting. If you agree to that, to a date to be fixed. Yeah. Councillor okay. Hanneman. Thank you, Chair. Um, I mean, as we know, the initiative is vacant for organisation. I know, I think, I think Councillor Adam Eachie's um, idea is, is sound, but as I said, you might get a bit political with maybe both big and the small P. You never know. We could have two separate meetings, one with each. Mm -hmm. Councillor Adam Eachie. Yeah. Um, I think it'd just be good to just focus on one meeting because I don't want to stereotype big organisations, but communication always falls down and everything. So having two separate things, but keep to one thing, and I agree with Councillor Blake's point, the CCG, sorry for using a bad analogy, it's like clogging a dead horse, but you know, they're not really. So I think if we get this one meeting thing, then that's more pressure, and I think we should talk to district councillors, our local MP, to sort of thing to get that more oomph. And, uh, good way to find it. I see your point. It's, it's, a, it's a big difference. Edge provides services. Edge, Edge doesn't commission anything. So if you want to talk about having something in seafood, Edge cannot do that. Edge provides service. Edge is what's called a provider. So all Edge will tell you, all Edge will tell you is, well, if it, it, we, 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 we only treat people in Eastbourne or Conquest but we will treat them sooner, or, or this is our cancer treatment rate. Edge wouldn't provide much needed services in Seaford. If we want that, and that's our objective, then we need to, to engage with the CCG at some point, because CCG actually controls the budget, controls the, push, the strings, and does anything. All we will achieve from this meeting is to find out is, is, is how wonderful Eastbourne DGH is. Um, and that's if, in, and if, if that's what we want to achieve, then that's fine, but let's be quite clear about that. That all we will get from this is this is about Eastbourne DGH and Conquest Hospitals. It's not about C for because Edge doesn't pro Edge provides the services and, and the provide the services from those buildings and that, that and that's what Edge does. Councillor Nathan, did you want to say something? Well, I thought uh, the two were complementary and I just thought we should have the two together. Yeah. Um, and then see where it leads at uh, uh, one meeting and take it from yeah. there. Yeah, that's, that's, my, that's my proposal. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll accept that. So the proposal is that we have uh, replied response, we have to consider response to a reply, in reply to a letter required from the, received from the NHS. I haven't put my glasses on. Um, so we are considering whether or not to include uh, C's what, what it? CCG. CCG in the meeting. Sure. That's Annie I think I, I think someone should get back to this this lady Ruth Fair, whoever this lady is, and see if we can find out if they'd be welcome to attend this session. Because I must say, if I was putting on, um, if I worked for this particular organisation and I was doing presentation and, and I had another organisation come in, so I would feel as I was being hijacked a little bit. So I, I think I think that needs to be clear, clarified mm -hmm. before we even start. <laughs> Invite the CDGs on top of their own invite. Because you could argue, why did the CDGs do their own invite to us? So, so maybe to summarise, we, we, if I get in touch with Esh and ask, say we, we'd like you to come along, we would also like CCG to come along as well as possible, mm -hmm. and we'd like it to be on a Thursday, the end of August, on one of the ones that's available in September if the year's any, and we'll have an extraordinary meeting at a, a venue such as the small room sure. at the Baptist Church. And we'll try and organise it for them. Is that, is that summarise what you'd like us to do? That, that's that's fine. Yeah, yeah, that's fine. Yeah. 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 Is everyone happy yeah. with that? Yeah, that's what I'm with. I think the third seat, the seat head school and the other school would probably be the stage there. I and mean, just read it back there. It's not going to be a bum fight. It's just actually to inform residents what's going to have a forum discussion rather than, a, than an agenda discussion. That's true. Councillor Honeyman? Uh, yeah, just to reiterate the corrective comment about the fact that it would be nice if it was open up to the public. So obviously, when we mentioned about a small room, that might not be big enough. Mm. It takes over 100 members of the public, I think. Oh, right. I, would, yeah. I just thought with the health issues... And no, no, no. It's, it, it's not the main room. It's the smaller one. We've had, oh, that's fine. Uh, I just knew it was... We've had, the, uh, we've had the annual town meeting there in the past. It takes one over 100 people. Okay. Yeah. Okay. 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 Okay.
Do you want to reconsider your proposal? That's it. It's like 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 it's we are recommended to consider giving new and existing staff who have not already joined the local government pension scheme the option of entering into the alternative pension scheme, NEST, to give approval to officers to source this new pension scheme, NEST, in time for the auto enrolment date of 1st October 2016. Any questions? Chair, yeah, I, I would just like to add to the recommendation that NEST is the preferred pension scheme that people would go into automatically if they haven't opted to run the local government one should be added to the resolution. We, we're pretty sure that some staff will actually, we have to enrol them whether they like it or not, um, under also enrolment. But they can then withdraw, they may straight away and write and withdraw. But what it means is that they'll be in for a month and then they'll come out if they want to. And we're pretty sure some staff will do that. It's a lot easier to do that with NEST than it is with the local government pension scheme. Um, so it's better from a practical level and a financial level if the scheme that people go into if they don't opt to go into the local government one is the NEST one. So that needs add into the resolution if you're happy with that, Chair. Right. Any more questions? No. Can I have a proposal that we accept this? Councillor Chambers, second Councillor Campbell. All in favour? Item number 16, to present an, <coughs> an update report from the Neighbourhood Plan, Steering Group and Action in Rural Sussex. Uh, the report is on pages 97, 98, and the status update is Appendix B on page 99 and page 100. Any questions? Any questions, comments, Councillor Brown? Yeah, I'd like to make a statement, if, if I may, Madam Mayor. Certainly. Um, it, it, uh, it really concerns councils sitting on committees and groups. Um, the council, I think the council should set up a protocol for joining committees and groups which are already subscribed to by councillors who have been properly voted onto those groups. Uh, councils should not attempt to bulldoze their way onto any committee or group that they fancy or which they think will enhance their residents' appeal or their political career. They should observe the process set up by the council, which is subject to being elected by council. Councillors should not comment adversely on, in public or on social media about the activities of any committee or group just because they do not like the way those groups are being, being managed. Neither should they make comments about the people who serve on such bodies as being the wrong people. Just because these people are invariably willing volunteers. Commenting like this is, is li liable to make those persons who serve on these groups complain and is likely to bring the council responsible and the council into disrepute. It also takes up unnecessary council staff time dealing with the aftermath of these council actions. Councillors should not attempt to take over responsibilities of any committee or group to which they have not been voted on to by the council. If they wish to help, then they should, out of courtesy, approach the chairman of the group and state how they think they can do so. Councillors should certainly not use their own email and Facebook pages to ask members of the public to send details to them which are not subsequently passed on to the group but are used to launch a social media assault on that group. I refer to the press and media policy, and particularly the social media protocol. The Labour Plan Steering Group also agreed that councillors should not act as chairman of the steering group or leader of any focus group, as this may adversely affect any decision made by the plan, made by the plan inspector. I ask councillors to bear this in mind and act in a reasonable and adult manner. Thank you. Any questions? I'll, I'll just make, uh, Coming and saying, um, 
thank you for Julie doing such a splendid report. Thank you, Julie. <laughs> Councillor Campbell, I'd just like the opportunity to thank um, people from yesterday meeting. Um, it was so lovely to be part of this and I actually felt quite emotional you know, when we were asked to write the vision that we have for this town and it made me realise how lucky we are to be able to be in this process and I would ask for everyone involved to respect it and love it because it's such a great opportunity to, to look at and a lot of the residents obviously that were actually left out so um, I will take a bit of um, responsibility for my actions um, but I was asking residents um, from residents asking what was going on and we didn't know. Um, having joined the committee for this piece of the groups and the focus groups and stuff I understand fully what's going on. Initially um, Council Aitken supported me in, in your question what was going on um, and we weren't really made aware that, that it wasn't really sort of following normal council protocol so there was, there was things there to which I apologise um, for getting involved in um, And just quickly, if we can get more people on, on the working groups, because at the moment I'm actually uh, sort of designated to a leading of, of one of the groups. And I already said last night, I'm not happy about that because I'm a councillor, and it is actually something that the residents, residents should be doing. So we need to perhaps look at the focus groups and, and get more, a way of getting some more people in, in, in to join the group. Yeah, thank you. Right, so how many, uh, item 1, 2, due to two resignations, the Seaford Town Council membership, the Neighbourhood Plan Steering Group has two vacancies, which the Council is now asked to nominate and appoint members to fill. Um, if Councillor Hader is still a member... She, yeah, she, she, sorry, Councillor Hader was missed off that list, so yeah. this is an addition to Councillor Hader. So at the moment, the current list is Councillor Brown, Chambers, Freeman, Hader, Honeyman, and Muster, and there's two vacancies at present. Right. Is there anybody who wishes to stand for the steering group? Councillor Latham, Councillor Foreman, Councillor Argent, Councillor Campbell. Right. Who would like to propose Councillor Latham? Or do we need to do that? I'll propose myself. <laughs> <laughs> I'll propose Seconded. Seconded. I'll propose David. David. And seconded? I've got a question. Yeah? Sorry, I'm going to make we've got the chair of the Nobel uh, Panel anyway. So how many councillors should be on the, 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 no, I don't say that exactly, Councillor How many councillors should there be on a typical neighbourhood plan steering group? And where I've read, it seems to vary as well. So, how many do we really need as opposed to wanting to just have half the councils on it, for example? So, how many have we got at the moment? I think we've got one, two, three, four, five, six. So, what have we got? Seven? Or do we need eight? I think it should be eight. Where's that, where's that written down, please? There isn't, there isn't a perfect answer to that. Exactly. I, think, That's what I, mean. yeah. I think what what you don't want is to have the steering group dominated by councillors. Yeah, that's why I said that. So if you if you have 
if you only have 10 on the steering group and you have seven councillors, then that, that means it's dominated by the council that loses the, the whole ethos of behind the neighbourhood plan should be public on the steering group. If it's dominated by councillors, then it doesn't achieve that. So the, obviously the more councillors you have on there, that means you need more members of the public on there. The steering group shouldn't be more than 12 or 13 in size really, because then it starts to become unmanageable. So in a way you could argue that um, you know, six is enough, um, but, but that's uh, at the moment you, you've got eight people nominated on there. I mean, it shouldn't be more councillors than basically members of the public. Basically. That's right. I'm not sure how many members of the public are on. I don't know. Who's the, can, we, can we ask? Can we ask who's actually on? Uh, before we make a decision. Is this is the standing orders. Yeah. 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 Only in favour. Yeah. 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 Aye. Yeah. 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 So there's seven members of the public. It's 14, okay. it's 14 seven residents and seven um, councillors for the steering group. That was what I'm... Uh, excuse me, Councillor Ball, one point of order. We think it's seven. We think it's seven members of the public at the moment. So... Okay, one minute while we check figures. Okay, I think one needs to check as well. That's we need to check that the uh, the existing six members there wish to work return. Because I know some went away uh, from a conversation we had today, but they were on there. So it's Council Brown, Chambers, Freeman, Freeman, Buster, and Ada. If they are all on the if they all wish to continue. Right. So how nine. many is it? We do actually have nine. 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 Yeah. Yes. So we can go for eight councillors. Right. Orders. Yeah. Sorry, I didn't ask to speak. <laughs> um, yeah. What I was going to say was, I was on the interim steering group, and I, I think there was some miscommunication because that was an interim group, and I didn't, I didn't resign as such. I just thought that was going to evolve into a new group. It, you know, it makes it sound as if I went <coughs> out on it. But I, I, I heartily agree that there should not be too many councillors, and mm -hmm. uh, I think we're in danger now of tipping over that way. Uh, Councillor Oster? Yeah, my name is on that list um, mentioned in the minutes here, but I've never been invited to a meeting or a workshop or anything, so I think possibly um, I would draw my name. Okay, thank you. Councillor Borman? Yeah, just going back to... Um, Councillor Borman. Sorry, Apologies, Um Yeah, it was, it was the steering group from Fresh England's notes last night, actually. Seven residents and seven councillors. That, that is the number that I wrote down specifically. Councillor Brown? Uh, yes, Madam Mayor, I support what the Chair said. When the inspector views a report, uh, when we put the plan in for review, and he sees that there's an overload of councillors on it, it could well go against it. And I support the fact that there should be seven. And I think that's quite right, because that's an imbalance. If you've got an equal number, you get another equal number, and then you have a job, you know, um, doing a vote. So. Councillor Campbell? Sorry, Chair. Um, yeah, do we actually need any more with the numbers that we have? Well, we have Councillor Worcester's withdrawing. We have five at the moment. We have five, five at the moment. I would like to know if five wouldn't be enough, because if we, we want well, to give power to the residents... I mean, you've got five focus groups, sorry, five focus groups in the steering group, and you need one councillor on each one of those, which is six, actually. And as mayor, I don't have the time and to do a third there are There are opportunities for councillors to join the... Uh, Sorry, I'm There are opportunities for councillors to join the focus groups as members of the public. You know, nothing against that whatsoever. Mm -hmm. uh, please come along if you wish to join the focus groups in, in that method. But appointed councillors, I think probably seven is, is probably just about right. Mm -hmm. Sorry? We don't, we don't really want to outnumber well, them. There's nine, there's nine. There's nine. Yeah, there should be more. So, right. Can we just sort out who's actually standing for election? First of all, are all the current members wishing to continue with membership of the steering group? Yeah. Councillor Brown? Yeah. 
Councillor Chambers, Councillor Hayder, Councillor Honeymoon, and myself, yes. So we need to appoint two councillors. Councillor Latham, you've nominated yourself. Anybody second? Okay. Councillor Brown. Uh, also, okay. Councillor. Yeah, I think Bullman. we should take them one at a time and count the number of votes, because otherwise it gets very difficult. Okay. Councillor. Sorry, I had to reinstate standing orders first, yeah. didn't I? <laughs> so, Councillor Latham, apologies. Councillor Campbell, you're seconding. Councillor Barman seconded. Okay. Yeah. So it's Councillor Barman who's nominated himself. Yeah, we take, we're taking each one individually. Yeah, so. Are we all not? Yeah, we, so we, we need to get it. Those being seconded yeah. first. Yeah. I will stand. I will stand back. Sorry? I said if you've got enough, I will stand back. Okay. Yeah. 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 We've got Councillor Latham, Councillor Ballman, Councillor Campbell. We have two spaces. I guess that means each councillor has two votes. So maybe it's the easiest thing if I read down the list and each councillor tells me the name of the two we vote for. Okay. Um, councillor Adonigi. Councillor Argent. Councillor Campbell and Councillor Latham. Councillor Barman. Councillor Brown. Councillor Latham and Councillor Campbell. Uh, Councillor Bearfield. Councillor Campbell and Councillor Ball. Councillor Campbell. And myself. Councillor Chambers. Uh, Councillor Campbell and Councillor Latham. Uh, Councillor Freeman. Councillor Campbell and Councillor Latham. Uh, Councillor Hader. Councillor Campbell. Councillor Livia Honeyman. Uh, Councillor Campbell and Councillor Latham. Councillor Richard Honeyman. Um, Councillor Latham and Councillor Campbell. Uh, Councillor Latham. Councillor Noah. Councillor Mary. Councillor Latham and Councillor Borley. Councillor Sylvia Adam. I'm standing. Uh, Councillor Walrevin. Councillor Campbell and Councillor Latham. Councillor Worcester. Um, mm -hmm. Councillor Borley and Councillor Latham. Okay, and um, that's. Uh, yeah, I see that that's. Uh, I won't add the numbers up. I'm saying clearly it's Councillor Latham and Councillor Campbell who've been voted in that case. So we now have seven on the steering group. The next meeting of which is July the 11th, seven o'clock here. Seven o'clock in this room. And there's no financial financial implications. And thank you to Julie for a wonderful report, very, very good, and the status update. Who wrote that? Was it Julie? Yeah. Well done. Very good. And that brings us to the end. Thank you for your all attending, and look forward to seeing you at the next meeting. Meeting closed.